Hello, my name is Raymond Lewis and I'm a local environmentalist and I'm here today at the Beaumont Cliffs which are rich in fossil heritage. So important are they worldwide that only a couple of years ago Murray Orr, a local collector, found just around here a whale's tooth, the carnivorous whale. That hit the headlines of the fossil collectors worldwide and led to a big increase in what we needed to do here. The cliffs are rich in fossils for both amateurs and professionals alike. But you need to know how to see them. And this area in particular is also now subject to a national request for heritage protection. That's how important it is to us. Now, I'd like to introduce to Murray Orr because what you need to be able to do when you come down here is actually see. It's very hard to see fossils without some guidance and support and that's what our video is all about. So now I'd like to introduce Murray Orr who has become in fact the inaugural president of the Beau Morris Earth Science Society Incorporated. Murray, over to you. Welcome to Beau Morris Bay. Uh, this bay is very special in Australian prehistory. Uh, it contains fossils of the late Miocene age and uh, they are about five and a half million years old. This bay is uh, full of fossils including um, the great whales that uh, used to uh, ply all these waters and the uh, megafauna which used to come down out of the cliffs and frequent these uh, shores. The, the bay itself uh, is eroding and uh, that's why we find fossils here. Uh, the fossils are washed up almost every tide onto the beach and you can find them simply by uh, walking along and picking them up as long as you know what to look for. There are a number of uh, ways of uh, identifying fossils. Some will be marine, some will be land fossils. Uh, the land fossils are much rarer than the marine. All you need to do is basically walk along and pick up things that you think might be fossils. The first thing to do is to look at, at something and think it's unusual, then you can pick it up, uh, try and identify it. If you have any questions you can go to the museum and they'll uh, give you further advice. Fossils are amazing traces of time and place. They are travellers from deep time that tell us about lost worlds and vanished lives. But they're much more than that. Fossils are data. They are evidence for the evolution of life and our environments on this planet. In order to make the most of fossil finds, particularly those rarest, unusual and most scientifically significant fossil discoveries, even in our very own backyard here in Victoria, fossils need to be brought to the attention of the State Museum, Museums Victoria. Then we're able to determine what you might have found. And after that, do the research to establish the scientifically importance of that fossil discovery. So why does it matter that you might donate a fossil to Museums Victoria? When we do science, we need to ensure that what we discover and what we find out through our research can be repeated again and again for generations, centuries to come. The museum's role is to preserve and secure those significant fossils, those traces of past worlds, so that science can continue on those finds forever into the future. And that's why bringing your fossil finds that are rare and significant to the attention of the museum makes a big difference. Every new fossil find could change the way we think about the history of our planet. There's a number of fossil sites around the bay. There's uh, Fossil Beach at Mornington, and there's Beaumaris Bay, and there's also fossils around on the Ballerine Peninsula uh, facing the Southern Ocean. So when one is looking for fossils, there's a mantra you can use to um, help yourself remember how to spot which kinds are which. And this mantra includes shape, size and texture. So for shape, um, the kind of fossils that you need to look for in this are 
teeth because the teeth have a very distinct blade and a root and you, you can pretty much tell a tooth is a tooth when you see it just from shape alone. Another thing you can use shape to find is um, the heart urchins, the venia wood's eye, because they're very distinctive. They look exactly like a heart. Size is most useful for figuring out what something is once you've already found it. For example, um, a lot of small teeth um, are diagnosed just on size alone because certain species don't grow bigger than a certain size. So it's not as useful for picking stuff when picking stuff up when it's on the beach but it's most helpful when identifying something and texture is probably the most helpful of all because um, everything has its own distinct texture for example whale bone almost always looks like wood and the surfaces of teeth and crushing plates are often very very shiny which makes them stand out from other objects on the beach and shells often have very um, circular patterns on them especially in bivalves and that's quite helpful in spotting something that's on the beach mixed in with all kinds of other random sand. Some things you need to be mindful of while you're looking for fossils include the cliff faces, so making sure that there's no overhanging ledges or rocks. Slippery rocks on the ground while you're walking. The marine life living here. And of course, wearing the appropriate clothing and footwear and sunscreen. Uh, we want to remind you that when you're looking for fossils on the beach, uh, there's absolutely no digging. Uh, leave your spades at home. Uh, there are fines for digging on the foreshore uh, from both uh, the local council and state government, and they're significant, up to $10,000. Uh, so uh, it's important to remember, uh, hands only, it's what you find washed up on the foreshore. In the past, uh, people have been killed on this foreshore by digging into the cliffs which have then collapsed on them. So you really need to look up and live. Uh, the uh, local council have recently spent a lot of money repairing this cliff over here uh, after someone vandalised it looking for fossils. And we hope that when you're on the beach uh, you'll uh, not do the same thing please. An important part of looking for fossils is record keeping. And when you're on the beach, uh, most people have a phone and with that you can photograph both the place you find the fossils. And I have a GPS app on my phone, which I also take a record of. Uh, just as importantly, little black book. You need one of these in your back pocket. A fossil without provenance uh, loses a lot of its historic and, and scientific value. Uh, if you don't know what layer the fossil comes out of or where you found it, uh, it can degrade the value of the scientific find. So please take plenty of notes where you are, how far it is away from the cliff, the date, the tide, the time. And uh, you'll have a good record uh, to keep for future reference. I also then convert my photos of fossils found on a day into a database on my computer which I can then cross-reference with the date in this book later on. Storage of fossils is a very important part of the uh, collecting. If you don't store your fossils in a good secure way, uh, you're going to damage them. First of all, record where they've come from uh, and store them so that you can retrieve that information at a later date. For example, um, these three shells uh, that I have here are all photographed and recorded on my computer. Um, you've just simply got their type and date of find and, um, and that can be uh, cross-referenced at a later date. Um, in storage of smaller items like shark's teeth and jaw bones, uh, small shells, 
Um, there's other ways of, of storing them, um, but I prefer these gem jars, which uh, give some protection to each of the fossils, and uh, you can pick them up and handle them ha without uh, any uh, fear of breaking them. You can uh, store your uh, trays in, in a little box like this, which I've made up, uh, or you can put them in uh, uh, moving drawers. I also use uh, tool drawers from uh, the hardware store. Probably over the, your life of your collecting, you'll uh, change and rehouse your fossils a number of times. Just remember as you rehouse them um, to keep that record of where you found it uh, going. This uh, box contains both uh, crabs and barnacles, which are actually related. They're both crustaceans. Um, with the crabs, they're difficult to see, but when I pick one up and turn it over, you can see the, the giant front uh, nippers on the crab. Um, these crabs have been sitting there on the beach, just like this, for over five and a half million years. And uh, the barnacles, um, likewise, were originally attached to rock. You can see the rock inside the barnacle, but they've maintained their shape and their colour right through geological time. Uh, this one also has a baby barnacle growing on the side which is quite a rare find. So again um, keeping them in a box like this protects them and keeps them uh, in one area of your collection rather than shells. I've got crustaceans uh, in some of the collection I've got shark's teeth or fish jaw bones. The question is why bother about paleontology? Why do we really show an interest in the rocks and the fossils around us? There was a, a philosopher called Edmund Burke a number of years ago who said that those who do not study history are bound to repeat the mistakes that have been made. Well this is not human history, it's an even more important history, it's the history of our planet. And in the rocks around here, even though they only go back six million years, they do tell us quite a lot about what has happened as far as the climate's concerned and the impact that humans have had on the time most recently. So paleontology does give us a look at what happened in the past and why and how it happened. But today, it's more important than ever that we have young people involved and the community. It's part of our heritage. It's not something that is to be put and kept within the university confines. It is something that has to be enjoyed and experienced by people of all ages and backgrounds. So what this video does do is it gives us a chance to engage with the community and engage in particular with the younger people who one day will be the leaders of our community in anticipation that they will, through understanding geological processes, be able to be better leaders for the future. Because to understand our geological past will allow us to model our geological future and hopefully for the better.